This video is proudly recorded and produced on OpenBSD. Around a year ago, I made a video about why do I like OpenBSD and why do I use OpenBSD as my main operating system despite, uh, despite the fact that it's not a main stream operating system. I think it's fair to create a, a video discussing about the other side as well so I won't look very one-sided about the OpenBSD or very biased and also try to give more or less a clear view to those who have not used OpenBSD or trying or looking forward to just experiment with it so they know what to expect exactly. So let's begin. The first thing is that OpenBSD in terms of hardware support is much more limited than any mainstream operating system like Linux. But also there are some anecdotal experiences that OpenBSD supports hardware better than FreeBSD. I cannot personally confirm that. I am not sure whether that is true. I haven't, uh, I haven't had much of experience with FreeBSD, so it is something up to you to, to find out. About the lack of hardware support, I must also add this one, that the fault is not with the OpenBSD community, but it, uh, it is with the uh, hardware manufacturers because they do not, first of all, A, provide any driver for OpenBSD, B, they do not uh, publish their hardware specification openly so that OpenBSD community can write driver for those devices. And most of the time they ask uh, developers to sign NDA and OpenBSD in that regard has a firm stand that they are not signing any NDA stuff. So that's a contributing factor. The second point is about the default configuration. This is something that I personally dislike. I think OpenBSD default configuration is not that good, and it doesn't uh, use the it doesn't maximize the use of the hardware. And if somebody install OpenBSD out of the box, it's usually a slow, and also uh, it could be off-putting quite a bit for the new users. I think the default configuration can be uh, much more optimized. The third point is about the Bluetooth support. OpenBSD doesn't have any Bluetooth support. The code related to the Bluetooth has been removed a few years ago. And uh, if you want to, let's say, connect your headphone, uh, Bluetooth headphone, there is there are workarounds. You can purchase a do an external dongle and uh, make that one working. But other than that, you cannot make use of any internal Bluetooth. OpenBSD doesn't have a very good support about uh, virtual machines. There is no uh, virtual box or VMware support on OpenBSD. Your options are only limited to the uh, QEMU, and that one is a software emulator. is not really utilizing the underneath virtualization technology. So any uh, guest operating system would be quite uh, slow. And uh, the Homebrew uh, VMM uh, is also far from perfect. It doesn't support GUI. It only connects uh, with the serial, a uh, console serial or something like that. And it's also a bit of headache to get it up and running. That brings me to my next point, which is about also the Docker and Kubernetes sup uh, support. OpenBSD doesn't support uh, these two. Some people may argue that the Docker architecture is wrong in the first place and uh, nobody should use it. I don't have any strong opinion in that regard, but uh, for my work, I need to use Docker and it would be much more convenient if I can use Docker on OpenBSD. Again, there is a workaround to, uh, to fix, uh, to kind of use Docker on OpenBSD. OpenBSD and hence Kubernetes and that one involves using VMM. Probably I need to make a video about it uh, to just showcase you. It is not an easy process but it's doable and it's far from perfect of course. The next point is about the lack of utility programs. For example, you don't have any uh, program to control your sound card or volume uh, using GUI and switch between sound cards or configure your uh, microphone, as well as a lack of network manager program, whether it is a GUI one or, it, or the uh, console-based one. 
if you want to connect to wi-fi you have to create the file you have to scan the network manually and i think in this aspect it can can be improved quite a bit and the lack of third party programs i think uh, this one nobody can argue with it of course the port 3 is huge there are thousands of programs that you can utilize and install them but there are some programs that are missing and the next point is about the electron support or javascript node.js stuff there are certain support of electron of course this one may actually not be much of a negative point to many of us including me but whether we like it or no many applications are written in electron nowadays and if electron is not available on the, on, on on a specific platform including openbsd then we cannot write uh, we cannot execute that uh, that application a prime example is vs code i think you cannot dispute the fact that vs code is a good ide but since there is no electron support on openbsd then there is no vs code on openbsd many applications many electron applications they have a cute counterparts they have a G, gtk counterparts but vs code is one of uh, is the is, let's say is the unicorn here that there is no counterpart for it uh, except let's say something like a intellij or netbeans i love vim but vim is not a is not a replacement of vs code also, I have to say that the, the issue about the lack of electron support is, uh, is, due to, is, is because of Google. Electron underneath uses a Chromium engine. And if you go to the website that Electron pulls the uh, Chromium or whatever binary, you will see that um, there is no support for OpenBSD or FreeBSD or any other operating system that's not mainstream. Granted that we have Chromium on OpenBSD, but that one, the port is maintained by the community. I read somewhere that they submitted the changes or the, let's say, the modification to the upstream, which is Google, but they rejected those changes and, and they don't want to maintain it. So there's no official port. If there was official port, then the Electron problem would have been gone away, possibly sooner or later there is no drm support for openbsd drm is a piece of proprietary application or a proprietary program and that one also is maintained either by by google or one of the google subsidiary and if you go to that website i have done it before i don't remember the name exactly you see that there is no support for openbsd the next point is about Wine support on OpenBSD. Wine is not available on OpenBSD. It's, uh, it may sound a bit like silly, but once in a while I would like to play very old title games that are only uh, available on Windows. On Linux I use Wine uh, to work around that, but since Wine is not available on OpenBSD I cannot play those games. And that brings me to the next point, uh, and that's about the Linux compatibility layer. If OpenBSD didn't remove the Linux compatibility layer, I know it was removed because of the security concerns and also the code maintainability issues. But if it wasn't removed, then probably a couple of the points above wouldn't be that much relevant. Now let's move to the last two, file system support. OpenBSD doesn't support uh, many file systems. And this one is not about installing OpenBSD on ButterFS or ZFS. It's mainly about uh, actually be able to read and write on the file system. I have, let's say, a partition uh, that is formatted with ext4 and I would like to use that partition to share data between my Linux and my OpenBSD, but it's kind of useless because under OpenBSD, I cannot write anything to the ext4 file system. I can only read, and that left me with two, two other options, which is FAT32 and NTFS, and I do not like those file system either. But unfortunately, I have to use FAT32 now. And the last one is about a, a slow read and write to USB storage. If you connect your flash drive or your external hard drive to the OpenBSD, on write especially is too slow. 
For example, a 100 megabyte file may take a, around like a 5 to 10 minutes to write. So this is a problem with OpenBSD and uh, I think it's just we have to be more patient about it. So that's all for this video. I hope you enjoyed it.